faith, firearms, and freedom. This is Armed Lutheran Radio. Hey folks, welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio, a show about guns, hunting, competitive shooting, the natural right of self-defense, and what God's Word says about the issues surrounding gun rights and gun ownership. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran. need to turn on the recording light so everybody knows that I am recording. Sorry, a little break there. Thank you for joining us. This is episode number 366. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, and uh, this is our Reformation Gun Club online hangout for June 2023. We skipped May because I've been sick, had to reschedule this month. It was supposed to be last week. It's it's uh, where a storm took off a chunk of my roof last Friday, a couple of hours before the um, before the hangout was supposed to happen. So here we are. We're a month and a, a month and a week late, roughly, but uh, here we are, folks. If you would like to be a part of this in future, if you would like to come and join us for these online hangouts, visit armedlutheran.us/gunclub. Sign up for a gun club membership today. They start as little as fifteen dollars and seventeen cents a year. You get all so- all sorts of cool swag and and uh, access to our cool members only content on the website and invitations to hangouts like this. So check it out, armedlutheran.us/gunclub. And come join us for next month's Hangout. All right, let's see who we have in here. And we've got the, the usual crew joining us, I think. There's William. And Scott is joining us again this week. And William is mobile, as we can see. And let's see what we got here. David is back with us again. There's Mike. David is back. There's David. And Steve Clifford is joining us for the first time. All right. As we get Steve Canary, there he is. Welcome, guys. How is everybody? Thank you. Hello. Doing well. Howdy. (laughs) Don't crash, William. We're good. (laughs) He's got the camera down where he doesn't have to look at us, so that's good. He's keeping his eye on the road. Very safe. All right. Well, welcome, guys. It's good to have you with us. Steve, good to finally get you you in here with us. Thank you. For the first time. And so what we'll do is we'll start off with you. Quick intro. uh, Introduce yourself to the group. And then... um, and tell us what you're drinking tonight. Okay. Well, thank you for having me. I am Steve Clifford. I just joined this because uh, Scott Van Dorsten actually suggested it. Scott and I have taken a couple of uh, training classes together with scout rifles. And this weekend, I'm actually in a hotel because I am. I took my scout rifle to a long range uh, match where we're shooting at, uh, you know, out, out to 1200 yards. Nice. That's a lot of fun to do with the scout rifle. (laughs) And tonight I am drinking a Woodford Woodford reserve. Nice. Very good. All right. Well, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. David, you're up next. How are you, sir? Doing well. How are you? I am good. I am much better than I was uh, last time you guys saw me. Uh, Good. Yeah, I'm, I apologize for not uh, putting together the, not being able to do the May hangout, but you guys are all better off not having to listen to me cough at you all for the yeah. entire hour. Quick question for you. Mm-hmm. What kind of programming do you do? I uh, work on a Microsoft ERP called Business Central. Okay. Used to be uh, Microsoft Dynamics NAV, and before that, it was Navision when it was owned by this company in uh, Denmark, and then of course Microsoft. Oh, I knew Navision. Yep, Navision Attain before that, and so I've started when that was still in its infancy at 
I think his version like 2.6 was the first version I got my hands on, which is God awful. Now, um, back then I thought it was really cool, but today with all the advances that Microsoft has made, if you have to go back and program any of the old customers, it's just like, Oh my gosh, what are you people doing upgrade for crying out loud? Yep. Um, but yeah, that, I've been doing that for, uh, f- 15, 16 years. So Oracle 30 years, Postgres seven. Very cool. So what are you drinking tonight? Um, uh, just water, just water. Uh, okay. Taking care of the voice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, finished a Glock match last weekend. Nice. Nice. Um, had an 88, which is under my desired score of 100. And uh, had a 115, which is over my desired score of 100. <laughs> okay, it averages out. Yeah, pretty close. Uh, going to do uh, sporting clays tomorrow Ooh. with some buddies. I see, I, I have got to get back out to the range. I've got to do more shooting. I am... I'm hardly the armed Lutheran anymore, except for the fact that I own guns and carry them. I have not actually been to the range or to a match in Yonks. So we'll be shooting my father's 1954 vintage Remington 48. Nice. 12 gauge. Very cool. I've always wanted to try um, sporting clays, but oh, it's a blast. Never actually gotten out there to do it. It's a blast. Pardon the pun. I I have the shotgun. Well, I don't know whether it'll work. It's a 20 gauge. It was my (laughs) my late father-in-law's, our stepfather, uh, Remington Wingmaster, I think. So never actually gotten gotten it out to shoot it. So maybe that would be a good good place to try it out. It looks like it'd be a ton of fun. I think the wing, was the Wingmaster a variation of the 870? Yeah, I think so. It's it's got um, the same wood, similar wooden furniture. It's just got a humongously long barrel. Yep. So, but indestructible. Indestructible. Um, Almost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't. Remington doesn't make them like that anymore. Scott, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. Oh. Life with the new the new place looks awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the shop is going well and been bringing in enough business to keep the doors open. So we're off to doing furniture. What's that? You still doing furniture? Haven't started the furniture. It's the gunsmithing. Yeah. So the gunsmithing is keeping you super busy. That's good. Awesome. So, and uh, also today I I found out um, that... uh, my uh, cancer levels are down to zero. Well, I uh, thanks had a follow-up today, that. and there is no measurable trace of any cancer cells in my blood anymore. Praise okay. the Lord and pass the ammunition. Yeah. It's fantastic. So, and today I'm drinking Highland Park Viking Tribe. Highland Park Viking Tribe. That sounds is that an of it? What's that? Is that an of it? Um, no, it's Highland Park. I, I'm not familiar with Highland Park then. Yeah, they're a whiskey company from uh, one of the islands. Um, this particular one was a UK exclusive uh, release that my uh, beloved niece was kind enough to bring back to me and when she was over there studying abroad in Scotland. Nice. So I should cross that off my list because I will never find that in my Yeah, you'll never find it. Store. Okay. <laughs> Highland Park. Oh well. <laughs> Highland Park it's a, it's a they have uh several different ones that are available in the US. Uh they are very nice. I got excited when you said Highland Park because there's a suburb of Dallas named Highland Park. So I thought, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> no, this one's Highland a scotch. <laughs> okay, next time I'm out there, I'm going to try to find it. Do you know where in Scotland it is just off the top of your head? I can Google it later, but. We don't want you Googling and driving. No, later, later. 
Orkney Island, Scotland. Orkney. Okay. Cool. Kirkwell, Orkney Islands, Scotland. That's an island we've not been to yet. All right. This, so th this one, to. yeah, th I guess that island is pretty far up north uh, towards the Scandinavian countries. And that's, you know, most of their population can trace their heritage back to the Vikings. Okay. Yeah, I hear Scandinavian, and I keep thinking off of it, like like what the the Finns and the Norway and the Swedes drink, which is yeah. more akin yeah. to a vodka with like uh, uh, anise and caraway and a few things like that. And you typically drink it very cold, hmm. like out of the freezer cold. Wow. Okay. All right, Mike. How are you, sir? Doing good. What have you been up to since last we were together? And what, what are you drinking tonight? Um, Redneck Riviera. It's blurring out because yeah. of your background. Hold it right in front of you. Yeah, it's not going to work. Okay. Oh, that's uh, Rich uh, from Big and Rich's. Yes, uh, John Rich's. Oh, yeah. yeah John Rich. Yes. Inexpensive, but good. So, All right. um, I guess I have to jump on the ERP train too. So I've got JD Edwards of 16 years. Oh, we're all veterans of the <laughs> ERP wars. <laughs> what have you been up to since what last we saw you? Oh, nothing really. Just, just trying to stay low key. And, um, I did, out of interest, uh, I was wearing one of your shirts, the beer drinking shirt. I uh, was in a restaurant tonight. Had somebody want to take a picture of the back of it. Nice. <laughs> nice. Awesome. So. Very good. I don't right. know if they, if they knew who Martin Luther was, but I guess they just like the, uh, the same. Well, maybe they'll get them into uh, doing a little research. Yeah. The Lord works in mysterious ways. That is true. <laughs> that reminds me, Lloyd, I got a funny story I got to tell you once everybody's done introducing themselves. All right. All right, William, where are you? Where are you headed? What are you up to? Um, well, my wife and kids are actually in uh, Quebec right now in Canada. And on, on Independence Day, I fly out to... Uh, Niagara, where I'll meet up with them. And then from there, we're going to go to Pennsylvania for a family reunion. And then from there, my wife and boys fly to Germany. My daughter, who's 10, we're putting on a plane by herself to go to California to meet up with her grandparents. And I fly back here to Bentonville. Um, so we're kind of kind of all over uh, right now. For the, for the moment, I'm driving back to my in-laws place because our house uh, has other people in it right now, renting it as an Airbnb. Right. So when, when we go traveling, we treat, treat that as an opportunity to purge stuff that we don't need. We clean up really well. Um, we put our house on Airbnb and then we either leave town or if we haven't left yet, we'll go to my in-laws place and crash there for a couple nights. Nice. Okay. So, uh, so what I, have you what have you been up to since uh, are your your uh, wife and kids having any trouble with all the smoke from the wildfires? No, they we are haven't had any issues with that. Um, my son, once one son got a, uh, uh, a a bite on his knee that looked an awful lot like a brown recluse bite, um, and so they're they're treating and watching that. Uh, but it seems like it's 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 going away. I and mean, this happened yesterday. So that day wrestling fell over and bumped his head uh, on on some piece of furniture, and so he's got a big old egg on his head. Uh, other than that, <laughs> uh, though, they haven't had any, any major issues. Not with the smoke. Not with anything. Um, just just spiders and bumping their heads. And and furniture furniture. He's driving through a dead spot. And now we're getting like every fifth frame. Okay. So I'm 
I can guarantee he's not drinking anything. <laughs> so, but uh, the, the, I'm actually by the car. <laughs> oh dear! I have no idea what he said. I was finishing off the very last of the peanut butter whiskey, but I thought I would crack open a Father's Day gift from my son, a little Sherman Bach from uh, 903 Brewers up in Sherman, Texas, where he lives. So let's see how this is. It says, it's a, it, says it is a German-style Bach. And he said it was like Shiner. No, it is not. I tell you, I was I was down in I was down in Texas a few weeks ago and discovered you guys have one of the most incredible whiskeys I've ever tried in my life. Ooh, which one? Uh, TX Texas blended whiskey. It's not horribly expensive. It is weirdly sweet without being syrupy. As smooth as I've ever had a whiskey, it is unbelievable. It's also really hard to find in Virginia. It, it can be done, but um, but yeah, you you guys you guys have a gem down there. Nice. I'm like um, ten miles away from Western Sun Distillery, which is over in Pilot Point, and uh, I'm a fan of their of their vodkas, but I have not tried TX whiskey yet trying to make my texas ranger i've tried which is pretty good i've tried i've been working my way through some some locals but i haven't gotten to tx whiskey yet it is worth finding believe me just do that tomorrow while i'm out a good recommendation and if you ever need one let me know and i'll i'll hook you up oh i will <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, cheers, everybody. Great to be Blanche. together again. Cheers. Very bubbly. That does not taste like Shiner. I don't know what he was talking about. I don't know what that tastes like. <laughs> it's beer, but it's not Shiner. Maybe I had my taste buds all expecting Shiner Bach, and that was just, a, I should have gone in with no expectations. Oh man! Okay, who who has got, had a story for us? That was Scott, right? All right. Yep. So it looks so like it was Will, funny. Will has gotten to wherever his destination is, <laughs> so that's good. And I I just got to say that Will has to get some sun on those legs. <laughs> he was part. I've got what on my legs? You've got to get some sun on those legs. Oh yeah, yeah. I have been described as luminescent. Yes. And it's not inaccurate. <laughs> Luminescent. I love it. Leave it to Scott to notice that. <laughs> I did lean over into the camera a couple of times. So I just. Uh, so uh, it's funny uh, series of events. I. Uh, in my shop, I had a guy who come through town who was a truck driver who has been following me on the scout rifle forums and pages for some time now. And since he was at, he was a truck driver, he's delivering some trailers to Sheridan. So he decided to stop by the shop. And uh, in my shop, I have what I call the honor board. And I have uh, patches from different military units of friends and family and stuff like that. And I had added the Arn Bluth and radio patch to it. And, uh, when he was in the shop, he was looking at that and he's like, what's this armed Lutheran radio? And I'm like, well, um, and I told him, it's like, well, it's a, it's a radio podcast. So Lutherans and, and, uh, you know, pro gun and, you know, shooting and, you know, everything that says they're on the patch pretty much. And he goes, and he said, uh, what's, uh, <laughs> And he's like, well, what kind of Lutheran? It's like, well, it's, you know, welcome to anybody, but we're mostly LCMS. And he says, well, I'm an LCMS Lutheran. And, you know, it just like, it was, it was funny because it just, you know, how everything is kind of wrapped around together in the conversation, you know, of what we're, what we're all sharing common. Very cool. So hopefully he's tuning in now. Bird dog 
salted caramel flavored whiskey. Ooh, that does my, that does sound delightful. Oh, I was afraid that was a bird dog flavored whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> this I'll take my first sip of this tonight. I, I was discovered in the last month or so my very favorite sweetened uh, whiskey, which was called uh, it was it was Jeremiah Weed Sarsaparilla flavor. And it was amazing. It, it tasted like root beer and it wasn't so over the top that it would you know, knock your face off. You could, of course, dilute it if it was too sweet for you, but it was it was really delightful. And they stopped making it. And I, I've called a half dozen places around and they were like, oh, we can't get it. We can't get it. And I finally went to one. They're like, oh, yeah, they stopped making that. You can't get it anymore. I was like, Dang it. My favorite one. Of course. Well, I'm not going to put it on the list yet because if it sucks, I'm not going to buy I want to make well, sure. I will try this here in a moment, but then I'm also going to be doing something a little darker. Nice little vanilla porter. That is the classic patch. That is the very first patch, by the way, that we that I ever had made. And I had some some ideas for like logos and stuff. And I wanted something to put on the hat to take to IDPA matches. And an artist came up with that idea. And I was like, I don't know. That kind of looks like a rifle reticle okay i get what he's going for there and so i stuck with that and i i have a handful of those left and i was like i want to send those out as i was wondering what it meant it was intended to i I sent this guy and and i i gave him just an idea what i wanted to do i wanted something related to guns i wanted it to be a circular um design with the lutheran seal the luther seal with the the rose and the cross in the middle and he came back with that and i was like <clears throat> and the colors i wanted the colors to match the original color scheme on the website back this is back in the blogging days so this that is a classic design that is before the the two 1911s um and the and the the luther rose that's com- that is a classic classic design well, I have yeah, to show I got you. The, uh, oh, sorry. I got the uh, rectangular one with the Luther Rose and the two 1911s. Yep. So I, I, it doesn't even say armed Lutheran on it, but I was like, okay, that's intriguing enough that it will get people to ask questions because it kind of looks like a rifle reticle and it's colorful enough that it will catch people's attention without being like cheesy rainbow colors or something stupid. And I, I stuck with it. So, but once the, once the podcast fired up in 2016, I went with the, I had another artist come. I was like, all right, here's, here's what I want. See what you can do with it. And he came up with the, with the two 1911s and that's stuck ever since. So I carry around a lot of ammo. I schlep the ammo for my wife at competitions (laughs) thereby. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. I like it. Stupid. Yeah, I have that too. In addition to all the other thousands of things I'm allergic to, <laughs> to I chose the worst state in the union to move to where allergies. Oh, they, it's pretty bad here in Northwest Arkansas. Oh, I imagine. I, I got here and I met my doctor and, uh, and she said, uh, all right, you know, first time I was just checking in, meeting the new doc, and she was like, "Well, have you uh, any issues that you need to tell me about?" And I thought for a second, I was like, eh, "Allergies, just seasonal allergies." And she said, "You moved to the wrong place. <laughs> we got cedar fever around here, and if you're allergic to cedar, which I am, uh, when it hits, it can actually mimic the flu with yeah. aches and pains and fever, actual fever. It's insane." That sounds an awful lot like what happened here. Uh, we first moved to town in the middle of that ice storm two and a half years ago. Um, and it was just, you know, slippery, sledgy, just snow and ice everywhere. And then the first blooms of the season, oh. the whole household got sick. And we thought we'd come down with something. And it come to find out after about, about a week's worth of misery, it was just gnarly allergies. And we were, yep. we were ill prepared for it. Yep. So I get, to well, I tried to share around. a picture of the, uh, honor board 
but apparently JPEG files are restricted by the admin. What? That's what it says. I don't have to talk to that guy. Gonna have a, give him a piece of my mind. Really? I'll try it again. The yeah, it says transfer of CGN files is restricted by your account admin. Weird. Okay. I don't even know where to find that. All right. Security, maybe. Hmm. No, that's like kicking people out. I don't want that. <laughs> Stay <laughs> away from that. I will accidentally yeet somebody right out of the meeting. Okay, I'll have to figure that one out. Email it to me. Yeah, I'll send it to you on Facebook real quick. That will work too. Assuming I can log into Facebook while I'm doing this. All right. Uh, where is my Facebook? Facebook. All right. So how how is it, Will? There you go. Just sent it. Well. It's not as good as I had hoped, and it's certainly not as good as that uh, the sarsaparilla whiskey. I will probably get it again. But doesn't have enough bird dog in it. No, no, not enough bird, not enough dog. <laughs> Barely got enough whiskey. Oh, that's even worse. No, it, it's it's good. It's just I, I, I've I think I've just been spoiled by the one that I just fell in love with. And my wife likes it a lot, and so we would get it. Anytime we, we would share it with friends, I'd usually leave them the rest of the bottle and, and let them take it with because it was just that good. Um, but yeah, I haven't found a good replacement for it yet. All right. Yeah, just get you some Drambuie. <laughs> I'm not familiar with what that is, but. You're not familiar with Drambuie? Nope. Wow. It's a. Uh... It's an English whiskey. It's an English flavored whiskey. It's very, very honey and cinnamon. So, so the English taste of honey and cinnamon. No, pretty it much. Tastes like, it tastes like English people, or English <laughs> teachers, maybe. Sweaty That's a pretty cool honor board there, Scott. That looks like really that. good. Thank you. Yeah, every one of those is a friend or a family that served. Nice. Very good. Very nice. Hit. What is that? That's which one? The one right below, or right to the, or I don't know what direction you're looking. It's it's to the left of the armed Lutheran patch. The we ain't okay. That I'm not positive. That was in a box of my grandfather's World War II things. So the three above it are his patches. Those are his wings, 8th Army Air Corps, Army Air Corps. And then that is a unit patch for something I don't know. I think it might be an English unit, but it was in with his stuff. Interesting. Because it does not match any of the units that he flew in. And it's got a, that's a old ship on it, isn't it? Yeah. So, hmm. With a fleur de lis. Sounds very French. Or Canadian, maybe? The writing is English. Interesting. Hmm. Something Canadian, maybe. Maybe it's one of those French Canadian things. I don't know how many Canadian air units there were. There were the barely the any. With an old sailing ship on it. I don't know what, maybe, hmm. Maybe he ran into uh, somebody over, uh, over across the pond. Yeah. And swapped patches or something. Interesting. That is pretty cool. That's cool. I like it. All right. I don't have anything cool like that to share. That's pretty too. That's pretty cool. Oh, what just happened? Close that. All right. Um, I I did have. Uh, speaking of having people notice the logo, I did have at a at the very first um, armed Lutheran shooting jersey we made. I did have somebody walk up just because they saw 
the patch or the the that seal on the on the shoulder and he came up and which was the whole point of having the jerseys in the first place but had somebody who was an lcms lutheran that i'd seen a million times at matches just sauntered over and introduced himself just because of the patch so that's cool what is all that what's that all about so my little effort at outreach so that patch on the bottom it says we aim to hit yeah i don't so now yeah it's just it's you're right it's a little odd because it's got the fleur de lee and he did fly out of the france a few times but it wouldn't be in english if it was french wonder what that could be all right now i'm curious i'm gonna have to do some googling can you do a google search uh, an image search on it I, I don't know how to do a google image search oh that's true i could do that is it just me or just, are other people having I some just, uh, internet connectivity just found it it's found just it. you will 11th air defense artillery okay i don't know what that means Oh, it's on a military insignia website, but that's not the same. When I click on it and it takes me to the site, that is not the same patch. No, that's not it. Five hundred. No, that's not it. I am going to complain. This is false advertising. That is not the patch I was expecting. Every time I hear you say the patch, I think of Nicorette. Or that, that's the, that's the dumb, whatever the nicotine patch is. Right. I'm like, when did we start talking about that? <laughs> We've gone way off in the weeds. I, I tried searching for the, for that slogan. That didn't work. Oh, this is our homework. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Begin Googling now. Right. Yeah. And it, it's possible it was nothing that was official either because, I mean, World War II, there are people doing all kinds of stuff. That's true. Very few unit insignias were official. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to do an image search because just searching for the slogan doesn't help. Yeah. As you... You search for we aim to hit and you get some stuff that's definitely not military related. <laughs> Speaking of slogans, that, that one there reminds me of a sign I once saw on a on a bathroom wall at a urinal at a restaurant. Oh Lord. And it said something <laughs> said something like, We aim to please. Would you aim to please? You aim to <laughs> please, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. Well, I'll have to save that for future, for future Googling. It is a cool patch though. I like the board and long may it grow until you have to actually add another one. Oh yeah. All right. What are the plans for the, uh, for the furniture? Are you, have you had to back burner that for now or? Yes, I've had to back burner that a little bit. Um, I have a, a friend, a fellow in our congregation who is on temporary medical leave from his job and bored out of his mind. So we did start doing some woodworking, but we started off, we're just making a couple of Adirondack type chairs okay. and see if we can sell them and then we'll With put a little bit more money into it. What's that? With places to hide guns in them? No, no, just regular <laughs> chairs right now. So Hang it. But uh, hard to hide a gun in an art in an Adirondack <laughs> chair. Yeah, <laughs> it'd have to be a really, really small gun. Is that a gun in your speedo, or are you just happy to see me? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely not where you want to. So, hide. but I, it's definitely something I need to consider more seriously. It was always kind of like, well, if I slow down, I'll do that. But just telling a few people around town that I'm thinking about it, they're like really interested. Yeah. And, if and I actually yourself, had one guy 
contact me. He's like, Hey, be careful with that. We had a cabinet company and we decided to make a few of those things for fun. And it took over our entire business. <laughs> I like the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Will and guests. Look, <laughs> Rottweiler food. This one's actually <laughs> named Whiskey. My, my daughter, my 10 year old, named it Whiskey. A good choice. My <laughs> dogs are named after guns. Oh, my brother's got a dog named Ruger. Yeah, I got Remington and Mauser. <laughs> <laughs> the Mauser is the shop dog. He's very popular at the shop. Very cool. What have uh David, you've been have you had any concerts or been doing any uh any preparation? What's coming up for you uh music wise? Uh concert spring concert season is over. Right. I just recently built my Christmas program. Okay. Um so uh there is, however, one of the gals in the chorus is getting married July 22nd. So we're going to do a little pickup choir for her. Um, and um, yeah, the summer, summer is the sort of R and R time. Uh, Cause it hits hot and heavy when September rolls around uh, the day after Labor Day starts season. Could um, you please explain that to the choir director at my church? <laughs> because um, we, we are, for some reason we have rehearsals and performance singing every single week where we never did before so yeah let, let her know thank you well the church choir that i'm in is is also going on through the summer uh i sing and do not direct that choir but um the uh yeah so church choirs are an unusual organization uh and they take on challenges that even a professional choir would not uh and that no professional choir sings 52 weeks a year um, but many church choirs do. Um, so, uh, you know, even even a professional chorus would not attempt that. Um, but there for the grace of God, we go. And, um, you know, and, and it does. So, uh, by the way, uh, Lloyd, though, I am I've got two arrangements I need to be writing in the next few weeks. Oh, um, we're. We're going to have a children's choir for one of our concerts at Christmas. Nice. So I have to arrange uh, two pieces of music uh, for them. So dust off some old skills and um, small, simple words. Uh, we'll no, cats. <laughs> well, no, the first one, uh, the first one is actually, um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with. Uh, the Broadway show uh, Scrooge, um, Leslie Brickus did uh, music uh, for Scrooge, a uh, thing called A Christmas Carol, and I'm going to integrate children into that. So I just need to arrange that for them. And so they'll be singing with the main choir. Uh, and then the finale, um, they'll be singing with the main choir. And we've got a sing-along, and they'll be singing with the entire congregation the audience kind of thing and they'll do two pieces by themselves so the kids that get involved which will be up to fifth grade level um will get exposed to um a hundred voice choir uh and being a part of something bigger than they are so um hey, will, and why that's are you joining twice <laughs> are you piecing out on me and and rejoining in a separate device here Trying to get off my phone. Oh, I see. Okay. So if I join you in, will it break the space time continuum to have two of you? Oh, no. No, no, I do it all the time. I don't think we should chance it. <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> much, much cleaner for me. Thank you. We do it all the time. It gets a little weird, though, when if you have two devices and they're showing two different views of you. <laughs> oh, we can get a 3D thing going. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All angles. Unfortunately, the audio rarely syncs up very well. So yeah. you do get a lot of echo. I, I did have, have one other little thing I wanted to show you about the music. Boy, okay. hang on. All right. Well, his chairs. Oh, all right. 
What we got? So at the uh, at the end of the year banquet, they the president of the chorus made a presentation and gave me this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You have your own bobblehead. That's awesome. You are now a man of legend. <laughs> Very cool. That was the coolest thing. <laughs> that is really cool. A bunch of crazy people. We have a good time. Back in the day when we first got started and I was trying to think of, of interesting and crazy things to do for the show, I was actually trying to, or was considering doing a Sergeant Bill bobblehead. With, oh wow! Uh, a gun in one hand and a beer in the other, but never got very far past the uh, the uh, drinking and thinking stage. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still waiting for the tumblers in the liturgical colors. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Do it with an insert, so you just have one tumbler and you put the insert. <laughs> Well, I was pretty excited. Um, we, our, our church has put out a call for a new pastor. Uh, our previous pastor had to medically retire, but the, uh, the call committee selected a gentleman who came and visited the other day. And I noticed on his previous congregation's profile, he mentioned that he was a hunter, a shooter, and a reloader. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. So I, I got I got to meet him and interacted with him a bit. So he said right now he's reloading 45, 70 and 10 millimeter. And he mentioned that his latest gun is a uh, 6.5 Creedmoor gas gun. And he referred to it as a gas gun, which not too many people do unless you're in the long range shooting community. I was really excited about that. He hasn't accepted the call yet, but I'm really, really hoping he does because he just he <laughs> seems like a really genuine guy and a guy that I could I could get along with pretty well. So that's 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 our exciting thing here. Send him uh, send him pictures or <clears throat> video from your uh, long range shooting endeavors. Yeah, <laughs> that is a just, tough process. Yeah, it is a tough process, but um yeah, by the way, I just made a new video today, Scott. I, I, I just, just posted it on... Uh, I, I saw it. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Okay, good deal. Yeah. So I just two, saw it when I was you, waiting for this to start. Are you two same congregation, different congregations? How are you guys... Uh, that's kind of funny. Um, when I first met Steve at a uh, shooting class down at the Whittington, he was looking for a congregation to go to okay. and and we struck up a little short conversation and I, after talking to him for a minute it's like you need to find an LCMS Lutheran church it'll be perfect for you well and, what's, and he did what's funny is is I didn't go out searching for an LCMS congregation I was yeah. I was Episcopalian uh I was I did a lot of things with the Episcopal Diocese of Virginia uh but they closed down for covid completely closed down for over a year. And after about a month and a half, I decided that my family really needed something other than these virtual services. So we started looking in our area. Yes. The only church that had weekly communion uh, and was open was the LCMS church. And so we started going there and really quickly found a home and ended up changing our membership and going through you know, switching over. Very, very happy. It is just a wonderful, wonderful congregation in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. You learned very quickly when I told him nobody does potlucks like Lutherans. No, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> very true. Around here, it's uh, pulled pork and brisket, as far as the eye can see. Nothing wrong with that. Mike, you've been very quiet. And I just interfered with a drink. Sorry. He's not that sorry. <laughs> what's, um, what's, uh, what's things like in Hiram? You're in Hiram, Georgia, right? Actually, I need to send you a note and get that updated. So I can stop saying Mike from Hiram, Georgia. I am, I am Mike from Decatur, Alabama. Decatur. Okay. Decatur. 
I will update that. It's not far from Hiram, Georgia. <laughs> no, it's it's about three hours, uh, yeah, three and a half, four hours. Not bad. Decatur is four hours? Well, you lose an hour or gain an hour. Oh, so it's an artificial issue. But you've heard the whole yeah. the old joke, Mike, about Alabama going to Alabama. Is you set your clock back an hour and your calendar back 20 years? <laughs> no, the one that I heard is, is why do birds fly over Alabama upside down? Why do birds fly over Alabama upside down? There's nothing worth shitting on. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> You got to bleep that out. You've got an edit button, right? <laughs> oh, no, that's got to stay in. That's too good. <laughs> so you have to be careful about the ones that just sit there quietly. <laughs> yeah. We used to live in Alabama, so I make jokes about it. Yeah. Um, Actually, I, I like living here quite a bit. It's, uh, it's been a very good move for us. Um, I met some really dear people there. What made you decide to make the move? Uh, job change. Job change. Yeah, job change. Job change. And and uh, my grandkids live here. So nice. that's really cool. They're 10 minutes up the road at the house every day. Um, so that's good because I have an influence in their life. That's um, awesome. Very good. So it's worked out great. What have you done with guns lately? I can't, I, I, I have to live vicariously through you guys. I haven't been to the range in forever, like I said. So, well, the downside, um, oh no. So, when I, when I was in Georgia, I was heavily involved with IDPA. Um, and within this area, there are really no IDPA groups. Um, so, I have not. I, I need to get back into it. Where is Decatur related to? I've got friends. It's, it's near Huntsville. I start saying, I have friends in Alabama who shoot. Hey, Rob Lear. Yeah, Bir Birmingham's there. probably the next closest IDPA type area. Um, but that doesn't mean that I can't get into, what is it, US, US SPA? USPSA. USPSA. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Hey, Rob. Hey, Lloyd, what's going on? How are you? Nice. It's not quite settled, but uh, <laughs> we're in the new parsonage, as in like 1907 new. But hey, it's new to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. So we missed last month's hangout. So I don't know what's going on. Tell me what is it? Fill us in here. So uh, I just finished my second week of Greek at Concordia Seminary here uh, nearby in St. Louis, Missouri. Right. So I'm the, I've still got the jack lighted deer look going on there. <laughs> and uh, we're, uh, we're, uh, our new residence is here in uh, Zion Lutheran's Parson, Zion Lutheran Church parsonage in muscuta illinois um oh yeah so they uh, apparently for the last nine years or so ever since their uh, pastor upgraded to a larger house because they've got six kids um uh, they've been using the parsonage to help out uh, uh seminarian students that uh, that have large families and can't live on campus All right. so uh yes we're all here. Large family. <laughs> and all the animals. No. Yeah. Well, anyway. Glad you guys are settling in. Yeah, we're figuring it out. Figuring it out. And all the fun of, of, a, of a house built in the early 20th century. That's okay. I've only found one uh, light switch that was energized. Like the frame and faceplate were energized so oh, that'll fix you. that before the three-year-old got here which is good <laughs> right come on it's called a learning experience <laughs> yes oh, right idea yeah when the mechanical engineer is fixing electrical stuff and you, you know things are desperate <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
Stuart, how are you? I'm okay, Lloyd. What happened? With what? I never received the latest update until just a few minutes ago. Did you not? Eh, well, that's okay. That is weird. Were they that's voting you off the island? No, yes, no. they were. I was working on my Who's Spanish. <laughs> I've been enjoying a cigar and a gin and tonic for all matters. Very nice. I'm jealous. Um, I'm. I think you were in the shout out in the last show, and I was. I couldn't remember where you were in Florida because I still have you listed as Spanaway. Spanaway. But you're in Pensacola. uh, Pensacola. Pensacola. Yeah. I got to update Mike, and I got to update Stuart. It's like you're having a, a lovely evening there. Yeah, I don't know. It cooled down. It's 84 now or something like that. Nice. Yeah. We're in our we're in our uh, 90 straight days of 100 degrees, so it's miserable outside. Yeah, I don't even I think we got to 84 degrees today. <laughs> well, then. See, you've got the good end of the spectrum in summer, but you got the horrible end of the spectrum in winter. So <laughs> it, it keeps the riffraff out of Wyoming. This is true. This is true. <laughs> yeah, but I lived there for 20 years. <laughs> See, it gets the riffraff out of Wyoming. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Set himself up for it. <laughs> when I moved, I wanted something warm and sunny and not windy. And you well, I got the not Washington. windy part because I'm up in Sheridan and we got the big horns yeah. blocking the wind. Yeah, well, I was in the southern part in yeah. Hanan. It's Rollins horrible down there. Oof. So I didn't want to go back to that. How did you end up in Spanaway? My parents had moved to Bellingham and it, because the air base was there right. and the VA. That's how come I ended up in Spanaway. Gotcha. Okay. So now you've finally gotten to warmer climbs. Yes. Very festive and enjoying yourself, which is awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't smoke inside. The owner of the house won't let me. I have the same problem. So <laughs> what, uh, what have you been up to since last we were together? Uh, Aside from gin and tonics and tiki torches. And very fast trying to keep the bugs down. I don't know how good those tiki torches work for the mosquitoes. No, but it provides ambiance. That's the important. Yeah, ambiance. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but the thermos cell is good. Okay. Very good. What's a... normal? All right, you said gin and tonics. Right. Yeah, gin and tonic, oh, and what? Rocky Patel cigar. Ah, nice. Okay, I'll I got it from, some from cigar bid. All right. I forgot to ask Rob, what are you drinking? That looked tasty and interesting. Mixture straight rye. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Very nice. So what have you uh what have you two been up to? Rob, uh, we'll start with you. Uh anything gun wise? Anything gun related since last we were together? Just piling like the whole arsenal into my minivan and driving 500 miles. That's that's about all I've done with guns in the last couple months. That's bad <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah, the movers don't like to move that stuff, and I wouldn't want no. them to either. No. Especially since all my movers were Ukrainian. Uh, yeah, uh, I think every, every every yeah they all spoke Russian. So you know every Russian in America these days claims they're from the Russian speaking part of the Ukraine. Right. Naturally. <laughs> yeah, and then they tried to extort us for eighteen thousand bucks. So uh, I got to meet the local lawyer real quick. That sounds Russian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all the Russian mafia rejects are now working on and moving companies out of New Jersey. Oh God. Where did you it's move from? You said 500 miles? Green Bay, Wisconsin to uh, southern central Illinois near St. Louis. Oh, good Lord. That's ridiculous. I moved 3,000 miles for $7,000 or thereabouts. That that would have been nice. (laughs) You didn't have the Russian mob running your moving company, though. (laughs) No. (laughs) I I, I did the pods thing. 
Oh, oh okay. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm probably going to have to do something similar to that whenever I uh, get my vicarage assignment and we oh. figure out what other crazy move we're going to make. Yep. So you're going, oh, to the wrong, you're, you're going to the wrong you're going to the wrong seminary. <laughs> They've taken <laughs> care of us. Uh, the Fort Wayne St. Louis thing will never end. I never did count. I need to count how many of St. Louis guys I've got in the book versus Fort Wayne guys. I think it's heavily outnumbering on the Fort Wayne side. Four away was nice, but uh, the setup in St. Louis was better for the family. Uh, Although I have heard the old joke that if they play guitar at your church, then you probably graduated from St. Louis. <laughs> All right. You don't have to uh, fall into that. Uh, no, definitely not. I, I'm, but, I'm a big uh, fan of pipe organs. Uh, I mean, I know Norman Nagel's not, he's not alive anymore, but, uh, you know, People like him kept him on the straight and narrow. Now, here's the thing, though. I argue this with my pastor all the time. It's like if you look at some of the, you know, a lot of the Psalms, it says set to string music. There you go. Very nice. But the problem is you can't really sing the string music very well. Sorry. It doesn't work. <laughs> you need wind instruments. That's what the organ brings us. <laughs> it's a wind instrument. But, but the Bible says to string music well, that's okay that's just and because the pipe organ wouldn't fit in the tent <laughs> yeah it's too heavy to lug that thing around in the desert <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness um what was i gonna ask you um oh i know what I, I got a couple of interesting uh guns in the other day before you do that, okay. that thought before I forget mine. Now I remembered what I was going to tell you about when you guys were talking about moving and guns. I'll never forget when we moved into this house 10 years ago, we, we only moved like five miles. We were renting in a, in another development across town and I'm over here at the house dealing with the builder and the crap job that they've done with our backyard. And we have to move out that day and get moved in. And I get a call from my wife who says, oh, hey, the, uh, the builders are here. What do you want me to do with the guns? What she, did, <laughs> what she did with the guns was just to throw them all into a bag. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. Don't get them all out. Don't. I had long guns. I had old shotguns. I had all kinds of stuff. And she just threw them all into a bag, chucked them into the back seat of the car. <laughs> I had no idea that the movers were coming that early. So I was over here trying to square everything away and get everything ready. And they showed up and were like, we're moving now. We're not waiting for him to come back. So she just started chucking guns in the car. <laughs> Dang it. She found out how many I've got. Okay. Man, That's Lloyd, that reminds me of a good one. When I was deployed, my wife, uh, and family were all living in military housing in San Diego. But then we had another kid on the way. So we got upgraded to a larger house, but I wasn't around to help. So my wife got the Commodore's wife and the rest of the squadron CO wives to come over and help us move from one house to, to a larger house in military housing. And they got a great picture of like all these beautiful women carrying all my rifles from the house to the car and like my boss's wife, like, Hey, <laughs> I, I think it I was ran, an AK actually. <laughs> I read, I jumped in the car as quick as I could. And I ran back to the other house and I, you know, my wife comes out the door with a rifle in each arm and all the guns are in oh. the back seat. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Couldn't have planned this any better. <laughs> All right, uh, Scott, your story I so rudely interrupted. Oh, no worries. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's uh, I got two bag of guns in. Bag and a bag of guns. gun is when they come disassembled. Okay. Right. And the gentleman wants me to, well, he wants me to reassemble them, but he also inquired about fixing them. One was a Colt Thunder 
The other one was a Colt Rainmaker, which is part of the Colt Lightning family. And if you're not familiar with the Colt Lightning family of guns, it was Colt's first attempt at double action revolvers. Oh. How did that they, turn out? I don't remember. They never that. worked. <laughs> Start to say that, that they work never worked. Well the Colt American 2000 or whatever. They're yeah, it's they the <laughs> Colt couldn't make them work. So when he started to inquire about fixing them, I said, I can reassemble them. But if Colt <laughs> couldn't make them work, neither can I. <laughs> Can't guarantee anything beyond that. <clears throat> Did you at least no. have a, a diagram of where everything was supposed to go? There, there. Or did you just have to figure it out for yourself? Their design is <clears throat> extremely similar to the single action army as far as the placement of components. It's just some of the individual parts are designed different and wrong. <laughs> and wrong. So, so critiquing Colt's attempt at a double action what did they what did they do wrong that the, basically the, the steer engagements the steer engagements are weak and thin oh. so the you 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 start filing on things to get them to engage properly and then you pull the trigger three or four times and they stop engaging properly oh just that because like the, a Go ahead. I was going to say, it sounds like a, uh, a democratic dream gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, like I had a friend problem. of mine who worked on one for three months and the most he could get was three consecutive shots before it stopped working. Oh, that's when you know it's time to trade that sucker in or sell it off. And they, they are else. extremely collectible. For people that for like paperweights, <laughs> yeah, so don't shoot. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> if you want a gun that you can leave out in, open in your home and not worry about anybody using it, yeah, the great museum piece. Right. Yes, exactly. Right. Put that under glass and just look at it <laughs> straight from the factory to the museum. Like I said, a democratic dream gun on the yep. approved list. But officially, they were the Colt 1877 models. Oh. Oh, so this is old double yeah. action. Yeah. Really old double action. Yeah. Okay. This was at around the same time as the Smith Schofields and stuff like that. I got you. So there's a reason this gun isn't in Red Dead Redemption, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is interesting. Um, what I thought I would do tonight, we're not having, we're not doing July giveaway extravaganza anymore, but I want to start giving away something to the, to the fine folks who show up every, every, uh, month to these hangouts. So one of you fine folks is going to get a prize randomly selected from the vault. So... <laughs> Pick a number. Unfold. When I call on you, pick a number between one and a hundred, and whoever gets closest to what uh, is the commemorative sh roof shingle? Because that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Did I keep those? I think I still have a piece of one sitting in the front yard. I'll I'll even autograph it. Um, that's a great idea. We will we will rebuild the great storm of twenty twenty three. All right, uh, Will, pick a number between 1 and 100. 23. Scott? I'm going with 76. Six. Good choice. Mike? 60. David? 37. I always wonder about these numbers. Steve? Has to be 42. 42. <laughs> <laughs> Got some Douglas Adams fans. Good. Go. Rob. That'll be my last ship hole number. 92. Okay. And Stuart. My age, 66. Okay. All right. So I've got a random number generator here. 
set for one to 100. Let's see what happens. Rob is our winner. It's 96. And you chose 92. Holy cow. What size t-shirts for you? Just in case you just, you get a t-shirt. Who knows? Large is great. Awesome. Large or extra large. Either works. Either one works. Well, congratulations. And thank you guys so much for, for hanging out. It's always great so, to get together. So question for you. Yes. I thought moving it to Fridays was so that we could get some of the co-hosts to join in. And yet I think I've seen one co-host once and another co-host once ever. Yes. So I need to, so uh, Bill's schedule changed and he is now like a, he's got a promotion of some sort. So he oh, works weekends now. So I need to figure out whether, and Saturdays, Saturdays should work until volleyball kicks in again in the fall. So uh, we'll probably try to get some of these on the weekend now that I'm not going to volleyball stuff every weekend. Um, and I don't know what pastor's excuse is, and I'm going to have to shake the tree in Colorado to find out about Mia. Yeah, they only work once a week. I mean, come on. Really? I mean, seriously, he only asked to write one one sermon. What? Do that on Saturday. That's what Saturdays are for. Right, Stuart? That's what the week is for. <laughs> or the two weeks. I, there is a guy in Nebraska. He was he had his sermons prepared six months in advance. Oh, wow. And the last minute he would add things in, I guess. But uh, he was very organized. Definitely not me. <laughs> Have you ever heard how fast Pastor Fisk does his sermons? No, but I imagine he, considering he seems like he is like ADHD. He actually writes them the week before and then records it and listens to it all week long. So that he can more recite it from memory rather than reading it. Oh, he says he does it to help maintain eye contact on his congregation. I like That's it. what Walter A. Meyer III did. He had a memory. I like it. Okay. Well, next week we're going to be, you'll, you'll see the pastor. I think we're going to do a, um, uh, another clinging to God and guns video and we'll fisk a, a video. I won't try to describe it. Um, that I ran across from, um, Central Kansas Seminary, I think, something like that. It's Baptist. And it's a three-week, they did a couple of months ago, they did a three-week Zoom call symposium on Christianity and gun violence. And interesting. it's interesting in that the, the, the first, I've only watched the first one, it's all I could stomach. The... I got to give the guy who was the presenter for the first week some props because he did at least try to do some research. So he went out to a local gun store and part of his commentary is on the fact that they play like praise music and they've got lots of Christian theme items going on in the, in the range. And they are very much, you know, so he's trying to grapple with the idea of the, the, the firearms faith and freedom thing. Although he doesn't use my, my exact wording, I would have to seek my lawyers on him, but he, he does talk a lot about that and, and how alien that whole thing is. And he ends up buying, he actually does go to a gun store and tries to buy a gun because he wants to talk about the process of what goes into buying a gun. But in his presentation, he doesn't actually explain the process. So it's a little bit strange and he ends up turning the gun into a piece of art. So it's, it's yeah, it's weird. So that's what we're going to be fisking next week. So it should be fun. <laughs> no. I was going to say, if he, if he wants to experience buying a gun, I've got an old Rome revolver. Okay. <laughs> Scott, I thought they'd get a laugh. 
<laughs> yes, that one needs to be turned into a piece of art. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is he tells this story about how he's looking for a gun. He doesn't explain why he's doing it, right? He, or at least I don't think he told the, the pawn shop owner why. And the and the guy then proceeds to try to sell him a, one of his own guns that he had bought for his wife, but doesn't work. So he buys a junk gun and turns it into art. Huh. And so I don't know how this works because what exactly he did because he doesn't go through and explain because at the beginning he's laying everything out he goes through this big all right here's what we're going to talk about and here's what i was trying to accomplish and blah 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 blah. and when he gets to the gun purchasing part he he wants to understand the process and the laws and and all the stuff that it takes to go and buy a gun because having never done it he doesn't know <clears throat> and the way he makes it sound is the guy just is like, Hey, this gun doesn't work. You want it? And then he ends up buying it for practically nothing. And, but he never explains any of the process at all and why he was dumb enough to buy a gun that doesn't work from a, well, if you're going to turn it into art, doesn't matter. I guess so. But I, I'm curious. I mean, the gun's not deactivated. So it's, did he go through a 4473? Did he break the law in buying the stupid gun that was broken? Will these are questions and there's no comments on the video either. So they've cut, turned off comments naturally. So that's as much as we find out. So maybe he explains it in, in video two, which I just couldn't stomach yet. So anyway, so post, the, post, the, uh, post a link uh, to that, would you do what the link, post to, a the, link to that? Would you those videos and then forward it to the ATF and make his life really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> You know what we ought to do? <laughs> we ought to, just for funsies, one, maybe we'll do this for the July Hangout. Maybe we'll do a Fisk session where you guys can join in with me and Pastor Bennett. Uh, hey. I, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to take your show to a whole new level. <laughs> I think it will. I don't know whether it's a good level or a bad one, but it'll be... <laughs> It'll be interesting, and bring I, I'll bring something stronger than this. All right, thank you guys for hanging out. This has been fun as always, and um, Christ blessings to all of you. Really appreciate your support, and always um, look forward to hanging out with you. Cheers! Cheers! Have a great night. We'll talk to you next time. Bye bye. Cheers and God bless. Take care. Take care. Take care. For show notes, be sure to visit our website at www.armedlutheran.us. Check out the Facebook page, The Armed Lutheran, or join our Facebook group, Fans of Armed Lutheran Radio. If you like what you hear, please leave us a comment on our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback, or a review on iTunes, and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening to Armed Lutheran Radio, a member of the Self-Defense Radio Network.